Every Kubernetes cluster consists of so many different objects and it is super important for you to understand them. So in this video, I'm going to explain you every Kubernetes object. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's go. Starting with pod. The smallest and the most basic object is a pod, which runs one or more containers. Containers inside a pod share the same network and storage. Pods are temporary, which means if it fails, it might get restarted or replaced, losing all the pod data. And that's why you normally don't use pods by themselves in production. To run pods more reliably, Kubernetes has controllers. A deployment is the most common controller. Deployment makes sure that the right number of pods are running, supports scaling up and down, and also allows rolling updates and rollbacks. Underneath the deployment is a replica set. A replica set maintains a specified number of pod replicas by automatically creating or deleting the pods as needed. For application that needs stable storage or identity, like databases, you can use stateful set. Stateful sets provide stable network identities, persistent storage and order deployments, which is critical for databases or message queues. For tasks that need to run on every node, such as log collection or monitoring agents, there's daemon set. Daemon sets ensure that specific pods run on every node or selected nodes. If you need to run something once and then stop, you can use a job. Jobs in Kubernetes are used to run pods that perform finite tasks and terminate when completed. And if you want to run a job on a schedule, like cron job in Linux, you can use a cron job object. Now, configuration is managed separately from code. In Kubernetes, config maps store non-sensitive data like app configuration, while secrets store sensitive data such as password or API keys. For storage, Kubernetes uses persistent volumes to represent actual disk space either in cloud or physical volumes. Use persistent volume claims to let pod request disk space on these volumes. A storage class defines different types of storage like SSDs or slower disk and allow Kubernetes to automatically provide storage as needed. Networking is another important piece of the cluster. Service expose pods by giving their permanent IP and DNS name, so even if pods get replaced, apps can still talk to each other. Services are of different types, for example, cluster IP, which is internal to the cluster, and other service types are node port, load balancer, and externally. Ingress. Ingress resources manage HTTP and HTTPS traffic, routing requests to services based on host names or paths. Network policies. Network policies act as a firewall, controlling which pods or namespace can communicate with each other. For security and access control, Kubernetes uses RBAC or role-based access controls. Service account is used by pod to access the Kubernetes API. Roles and cluster roles define what actions are allowed and role bindings or cluster role bindings assign those permissions to the user or pods. To control resources, resource quotas limit how much CPU, memory or storage a namespace can use, while limit ranges set default or maximum values for pods. Pod level security like blocking privileged containers or forcing non-root users is handled with pod security admissions. At the cluster level, namespaces can be used to provide logical separation, allowing multiple teams or applications to share a cluster safely. Node Nodes are physical or virtual machines that actually run the pods. Kubernetes also supports automatic scaling. The horizontal pod autoscaler changes the number of pods based on CPU, memory or custom metrics. The vertical pod autoscaler can adjust resources like CPU or memory requested by the pods. The cluster autoscaler works at the node level, adding or removing machines depending on the workload. Custom resource definitions Kubernetes can be extended through custom resource definitions. CRDs let you define your own object types beyond the default Kubernetes objects. Many operators like Prometheus, Argo CD use CRDs to add new features and to perform operational tasks like backups, scaling, or configuration updates. All right, so this was our video. Apart from this, there are many other Kubernetes objects, but these are the most important ones. So I hope in this video, you have understood all the Kubernetes object. But if you have any questions, any doubt, feel free to let me know in the comment section. And if you want me to share this Kubernetes object document, comment below Kubernetes object in the comment section and I will share it. Thank you and subscribe.